Hi everybody, my name is Adam Duff. I am a professional fantasy illustrator and founder of Lucid Pixel. And today, it's my pleasure to bring you a full review of the brand new Cintiq 27 QHD. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the 27 QHD. That makes this the new flagship model Cintiq that's currently out on the market following the 24 HD. With that said, I did film an unboxing with my iPhone in poor lighting conditions by my five-year-old. And five-year-olds aren't the steadiest or most patient cinematographer, so I think she filmed my feet for about five minutes of it. Pretty useless, funny but useless. But instead what I'd like to do is give you an overview of what to expect when you actually set this thing up on your desk if you're looking to pick one up for yourself, okay? The first thing to mention is that it's very big. It's 32 inches across from one end to the other. That includes the screen itself and the borders, okay? And that means that if you have a standard size desk like 99% of the population out there, it won't fit on your desk. So you'll either have to put your poor monitor away somewhere or get an alter find some alternative. Get another desk something that's a little bit longer. I have an L-shaped desk that I've had for years and luckily I, I put good use to the second half of my desk because I got the Cintiq. One big difference you're gonna notice if you've ever worked on the 24s, this is considerably lighter, less than half the weight of the 24 HD. Now, of course, the weight I'm talking about is without the stand, okay? This comes at about nine kilograms, whereas the, tw the 24 HD was weighed in at almost 19 kilograms. So it's a considerable difference in terms of weight without the stand. Speaking of the stand, the 27 QHD does not come with the Ergo stand included, which in my opinion, it definitely should. That's definitely a qualm that a lot of people have, including myself. Instead, it comes with two pull-out latches over here and over here in the back that are very sturdy and nicely built. And what that does is it gives you about a 40 degree angle. And when I purchased it in store, I knew I was gonna get the stand with it, but I wasn't sure whether or not to get this one, the Ergo stand from Wacom, or the Ergotron stand, which is an alternative. And if you check the link in the description, I have links to other people who've reviewed the Cintiq 27 QHD with the Ergotron stand. So that's definitely something to look into. If you're standing, if you're putting it on your regular desk, you're looking at a very steep drawing angle. So the only way you're gonna be able to center your eyes up properly over it would be to get up and lurch over which of course, there's only one type of person out there that would appreciate you working bent over like that, and that is chiropractors, because I'm sure they would make a lot of business off of people who try to work on this thing for long hours without getting a proper stand for it. Now, apart from that, as far as the display is concerned, the display is, as the title of the product suggests, 27 inches from corner to corner, compared to the 24, that of course is 24 inches from corner to corner. Uh, so there's Although desk space wise, it takes out about, about the same amount of space, you get more screen real estate on this. The other thing you're going to notice about the pen display is um, that they've completely removed the express keys, the built in express keys along the sides. So their alternative to that was the express key remote, this, which magnetizes anywhere along the left or the right side. There's two magnets here. And the and this is there's metal strips on the side and it magnetizes directly to the side of the to the machine no matter what angle you've got on it. But I'm going to get more into detail about the Express Key Remote soon. I'm going to stick to the display for now. So there's no Express Keys. Instead, you get a smooth sheet of flush glass that goes right across the display from one end to the other, which is really nice because I noticed when you're drawing, you can go right off the screen and you don't hit a seam. Apart from that, you've got three touch sensitive buttons up here on the top right. Now, to, it's a good time for me to mention the fact that this is not the touch, the Cinti 27 QHD touch. Nobody ever has anything good to say about the touch feature. And it adds 500 bucks to the cost of this thing. It is a complete and utter waste of money because the touch does not live up to today's standards as far as touch functionality is concerned. So save your money and buy a good stand with it instead. If this was the touch feature, this button over on the far right would be to turn touch on or off. But because it's not, mine opens up display settings for calibrating, calibrating your color, your contrast, all that kind of stuff. The button in the middle opens up your keyboard, your on-screen keyboard, which because I have three monitors, always opens up on my, on my other monitor. So I have to drag it over like this. However, again, I don't have the touch feature, which would be, if ever, the only reason why I'd ever use this thing. Why? 
because I've got a keyboard right there. So, <laughs> and I can type 18 million words a second on this, okay? So it's completely impractical for me to just come up here and try to use this thing. And the other, because this isn't the touch feature, I, have to, I would have to use my stylus or my mouse to use it. So why would I go click, click, click if I can just type with my hands like that? It just doesn't make any sense. The last is the settings. If you have to set up your express key remote or your pen options or your display options. And furthermore, most importantly, backing up your settings. Uh, you will need that menu for that. So you can back up and restore all of your settings via this menu as well, which is hugely valid, which is hugely practical. Um, it backs it up on the Wacom Cloud. This has 23 settings on it. If you had to do that manually, every time it would drive you nuts. Now back to this, this display, the next thing you're going to get is a power button up on the very top over here. And four, which meaning two and two USB 3.0 port. And I, at the beginning, I wasn't sure how much use I get out of it. Turns out I use it religiously. <laughs> I use those ports all the time. My Bluetooth dongle right over here. I can extend my the distance of my webcam, my lighting, my microphone, because I do a lot of YouTube videos, as you may or may not already know. Apart from that, what you see is what you get. So this, that pretty much covers the display and the setup of this thing, at least the physical setup of it on your desk. Now let's start getting a little bit more deep, a little bit more deep, a little deeper into this product and start reviewing everything individually. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is the Express Remote, or the Express Key Remote to be more precise. And just to give you a quick overview of how this thing is actually organized in terms of the menu and settings and stuff like that, you have the outer keys that go all around the outside here. The inner keys, which are the four keys here, you have a bunch of keys around the touch ring, and then you have the touch ring itself with a button in the middle that can help you, that where you can change the settings of the touch ring for three different types of settings. Now, technically that's not three settings, that's six, because depending on whether you scroll left or right, can be set to different functions. So that gives you a total of 23 different settings that you can set up. Now, right out of the gate, um, the actual default settings for this are pretty useless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. I'm going, going to go into my preference file utility and I'm going to remove everything. So I'm going to wipe out everything. All of this, everything's been set back to their factory defaults. And I'm going to click on my settings button over here. So if I go into my pen button settings and then I go into open my pen settings here and I click on my express remote, you're going to notice that the settings here are just default browsing settings and stuff like that. And that's something that you can use for your particular workflow. Reminder, I'm a digital painter, I'm a concept artist, so the setup I'm going to be showing you is the setup for somebody who paints digitally. But if you work in 3D or photography, chances are you're going to be setting it differently. If I need to reset all these by hand, it's going to take me, you know, half an hour or something like that, right? I don't want to have to keep doing that all the time. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to First, set up my pen, and when you reset your settings, you have to recalibrate your screen. Remember, when you recalibrate your screen to avoid a parallax, you don't want to move your head to calibrate. You set it up from your particular vantage point to avoid parallax so that the cursor is always lined up perfectly under the pen because there's a little bit of space between the glass and the display itself. So when you need to recalibrate, all you need to do is bring your pen close to the screen, and then you can click on Calibrate, and then you click calibrate again and I'm going to do it very quickly and sloppily from my particular vantage point which of course isn't the vantage point I'd be using if I was actually um, if I was actually painting I would have it facing me right when I go back into my express keys you're gonna notice that all of my settings are still the old settings so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to backup and restore settings and I'm gonna go restore settings and you'll actually be able to see when I actually purchased the Cintiq September 19th 2015 I'm going to click on that and I'm going to restore. Wait about three, four seconds and I'm going to get all of my settings back. It's quite nice. Let's give it another second and it should be good. All right. Now, if I go into my pen settings again, you'll notice my that I have my settings here. So I'm going to show you how I actually set this up. Start with the pen. Okay. How do I set my pen? Exactly the same way I do with the Intuos. The bottom, bottom click button is right click. I can access my brush menu. I can open up different functions if I'm in my transform tools, so on and so forth. I get a lot of use out of the right click. And because I paint digitally, one of the things I do constantly is clip masking and furthermore, color picking when I'm blending. So I don't want to have to hold the Alt key down every time I do. I just use my mouse button for that. 
So you can see I set this to modifier alt and right click. Firmness, I actually have it set to its default. When I was working with the original, the original pen, if you can see that in the finder, this is the original Intuos pen, which is 1024 points of pressure. This is the Pro pen that comes with the 27 QHD, that's 2048 points of pressure. Apart from that, I set my double click down low because I want to click fast and tilt sensitivity never, ever, ever, ever did anything with it. Eraser, I keep at its default. On purpose, you're going to see why. Now, as far as my express remote is concerned, this is how I have it set up. So starting with the outer keys, all these keys out here, the first one set to zoom. Now, I originally had this set when I first started tinkering with the express remote. I originally had, it, had one button set to zoom in and one button set to zoom out. But that's not how I zoom normally. And furthermore, it's wasting a button, right? The, instead, I use the control spacebar keyboard shortcut so I can just click and zoom in and out. So all I have to do is click the button and zoom in and out like that, and I'm saving myself a button. And right under that is the move tool, which is the equivalent of holding down the spacebar, right? Why do I put them close to, close to each other? Well, because when I'm working, I usually zoom in, move, and draw. Under that is my size window plus. So it's the equivalent of hitting control alt minus or control alt plus. I use it to set up my workspace. Why? One of the things you're going to notice working on a large 27 inch display is you don't need a second monitor. Oh yes. In the video you probably noticed that I'm not recording the full dimensions of the screen and the reason for that is because I have an older computer. It's about three years old, three and a half years old. So if I try to render a full, the full HD display, it just takes forever. So it's a lot easier for me just to do it like this. Just take that into account. With that said, when I'm setting up my workspace, I open up, I create a new document and I scale the window to the size I want. I move it over to the, over the right. And then I open up my image references. I scale them down and it scales the whole window down so I can just place them, place them and start working right away. It's very quick. Now on the right side, I have screen mode, which is the same as hitting the F key, right? F for Frank. And that is if I want to go in or out of full screen mode, which is something I do very regularly. Under that, I have new document in case I want to open up a new document. Although I might use that for something else because new document's not something I do that frequently, right? Brush mode. Now I have brush mode B, same as hitting B, but I have, I originally had eraser, but then realized it was a bit redundant. Why? because I have an eraser on the back of my pen. And the reason that's kind of funny is because I've been working in Photoshop for 20 years and I never used the bloody eraser in my entire life. I just hit B or E, right? That's my habit. But I realized if I flip this pen around, I have, a, I have an eraser mode. And when you flip the pen over, it automatically sets it to eraser, unless of course you have it set to something else. So if I'm working and I'm drawing and I want to erase, I just erase. If I'm in a different tool, let's say I'm in the move tool or something like that, if I flip it over to the back, it it still flips it back over to erase, right? So I have the brush button there to put me back into brush mode if need be. And of course, it's something I use all the time. And last but not least, save as, because that's something I do every 10 minutes because I've lost enough work to, to know that saving regularly is, is hugely important. Now, my inner keys are set to my brush settings. The two middle ones are set to increase or decrease my brush size by one. And the ones on the far top and far bottom are set to increase large amounts. So it's basically the keyboard shortcut for increase or decrease my brush size four times. So that way, if I want to scale my brush up big and do some blocking and stuff like that, or if I want to work with a large brush, I hit the large keys instead. The ring keys uh, that are all the buttons that go that that lie around. There's one, two, three, four, five buttons all together. The one on the far left is my flip canvas horizontal. Use that religiously. On the far right is a new layer, but it's not just new layer, it's new layer enter. Because otherwise it would open up a new layer dialog box and I'd have to click enter. This just saves me the trouble of clicking the button. Oh, I'm old, you know, what can I tell you? Then up on the top left and top right, because I like to keep these things symmetrical, is undo and redo. And finally at the bottom is merge layers. Same as hitting control E, essentially, right? E is an Eric. The touch ring itself, they're set to pretty much the defaults that anybody would set them to. Zoom, brush size, and rotate. I never use it, but if I do use it, I set it to a low setting because that requires me to scroll more to get more steps. So those are all my settings for the, for the uh, Express Remote themselves and for the pen. And now we're actually going to look at the stand. So let's get to that. 
All right, the next thing we're going to actually look at is the stand itself, the ergo stand. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is an alternative to this, and that's the Ergotron stand. With that said, uh, if you want to check out the full review of the Ergotron stand, there's a link in the description where people show you demonstrations and stuff like that on how it works and everything like that. I personally opted against it. For my particular setup, it wasn't what I was looking for, okay? And I needed something that I could really you know, work on and put my weight on without ever worrying about wobbling or anything like that. Furthermore, because the stand is sitting on my table, the weight is spread out evenly. So it's not going to risk damaging my table or my Cintiq for that matter. However, when I'm actually working, I never work on my desk. If you know anything about ergonomics, if you work long hours, I can easily work with between my school, teaching online and, and freelancing and all, you know, I'm always at my computer. So for me, very often they say with ergonomics is to remind yourself to sit straight and center your eyes with the screen. That's not how it works. <laughs> because if you, you'll, you can remind yourself to sit for 15 minutes, but sure enough, after about 15, 20 minutes, you forget and you start drawing like this. You lean on one arm, you lurch forward, you pinch nerves in your cervical spine, your lower back, your hips, you start getting a lot of pains, nerve pains going down your arm from pinch nerves. I've, I've, I've experienced it all. So being reminded to sit straight isn't sufficient for me. I need something to force me to sit straight. That plays a very big part on why I purchased this, all right? So when I'm actually, when you actually have this set in its default position, it's standing up, it's locked into place, okay? And you've got two handles here that you'll notice are quite strong, they're quite sturdy. And you have to squeeze them. You have to give a good squeeze to be able to rotate your screen. Now if I let this go, it's fully supporting my weight. Now, of course, I'm not going to go and stand on the damn thing, but if I want to lean my weight on it, I'm not worried about it sagging. Once you rotate it, it'll give you just enough arm room so that you can reach inside, and there's a latch that's about the width of my four fingers. It's a nice wide latch, okay? And you hold it down, and you can bring it down into a downward position. Right now, it's actually sitting on the ridge of the stand itself. But if I want, I can slide this back very easily. And if I want to get a better viewing angle for me, I can bring it down like this. Now one of the nice things is the fact that there's rubber things on the back of the stand itself. When you originally purchased the Cintiq, the rubber pieces are actually on the back of the Cintiq, on the back of the pen display. But once you set it up on the stand, you move those over to the actual back of the stand. Even if I take it and completely sit it on the edge of my desk, it's never hitting the plastic. It's always hitting the rubber. So if I want to take it like this and just put it right, you'll notice that you didn't hear a tink. You heard a boop, right? And that's because it's actually hitting rubber. So I can set this up to an angle that I like and start drawing like this. And this is a very good drawing angle and I can access my keyboard shortcuts if I need to. However, that's not sufficient for good ergonomics in my personal opinion. And that's not why I purchased this. I got this because I want to be able to bring it right up close and personal like this, okay? Like that. The reason I prefer to sit like this is A, perfect viewing angle. B it's forcing my neck back because if I lean forward, I'm coming too close and I can't see the size of the screen. So it's forcing me to lean back, which is excellent for straightening your neck and straightening your back. Furthermore, in this particular drawing angle, I do not need to do anything awkward to draw. This is, I can reach the entire surface of the screen perfectly. But even if I want to take this and completely bring it off my desk and completely eliminate my keyboard shortcuts, now I've got my express remote, which I can use. And I can keep myself at a perfectly square angle like this and draw like this. My neck is always straight. I'm not tempted to lean over on one arm because then I knock my center, my center of alignment off on the screen and I can't see what I'm drawing properly. I'm forcing myself into an upright position when I'm drawing. This is proper ergonomics. This forces me for long hours to sit straight as opposed to reminding myself, sit straight at him, your back's starting to hurt. That doesn't work. Now, the, the last alternative to this is to set it in its upright position, okay? And now I'm 6'3", so this should give you a good example of just how much reach this thing has, okay? If I'm drawing, I can set this up, perfect drawing angle, and because I have the express remote, I can just take it and sit it here and draw directly. However, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, it's one foot away from me, I mean, come on. <laughs> How lazy are you? Okay, how how lazy? <laughs> You're back. You're trying to draw, and, oh, uh, and then I sue Wakem, you know, because I put my back out trying to reach for the garbage keyboard. Oh, trying to draw this. Uh, 
Oh, go back. The suffering. The cruelty. Ugh. No, for goodness sakes. Go control T and keep drawing, right? And I have drawn like this for more than one reason. <clears throat> Not only because it's good for taking the pressure off the back of your legs for circulation. That's excellent. Because sitting for 10 hours, no matter how good your back is, is very dangerous. So I'll put myself into an upright position, a standing position to draw. But furthermore, I've got three children. I've got a five-year-old, I've got a two-year-old, especially my two-year-old. Last thing in the world I want is to leave my desk for a couple of minutes and come back and he's done a beautiful little gouache painting across the surface of my pen display. I think I would have a heart attack right on the spot. So it keeps it out of the way of kids. So if you've got kids, excellent. Right? And I work from home, so my kids are here half the time. As you know, Chloe's homesick right now. Right? So that, in a nutshell, is the Ergo Stand, if that's something you're interested in getting. And I personally highly recommend it. It's, it's, and it's a necessity. It's not a necessity to get the Ergo Stand, but it's definitely a necessity to get an alternative stand and not use the default one. Because like I said, the default one is a chiropractor visit waiting to happen. It's not going to happen. The Ergotron can technically support the weight of it, but it's going to have a wobble and you can't put any weight on it or it probably will sag. Take that into account. Unless you have it sitting on your desk and supported by the weight of your desk, it's not going to work. So that is the review of the Ergo Stand by Wacom. And last but not least, I bet you want a little bit of a hands-on demonstration of how this thing actually looks and feels when you're actually painting. So why don't we do that next? All right, the next thing I'm going to do is give you a hands-on demonstration of the drawing tablet, the reason why you bought it in the first place. Now, one of the things that I was very pleasantly surprised about this is the fact that this is a very large HD display, and I have two 1920 by 1080 LED monitors as well, all hooked up to the same old crappy computer that I got about three years ago. And I was very concerned that it just wouldn't be able to keep up. It would demand too much juice from my computer, and I'd get a lot of lag. Zero lag. It performed extremely fast. Everything's extremely responsive. So I was pleasantly surprised how little juice this takes out. However, notice that if you're actually looking at the screen capture, you might be able to see it in the video, but I'm only recording at 1920 by 1080. That's because my computer's old and recording the full screen dimension lags a lot. And I've got my webcam and I'm screen recording and I have my mic. So when I'm drawing, you're going to get a bit of brush lag when I'm drawing, naturally, okay? Just because my computer can't, can't quite keep up. But without the screen recording going on, not a problem at all. It performs very well. Secondly, I'm going to use this entirely. I've set myself up to draw as I would if I was working on my own artwork or teaching a class, right? So I'm going to depend entirely on my Express Remote. Now, I might need to access my keyboard for certain specific things, but the majority of the time I'm going to try to do all of my work with this. I'm going to move this up here, namely because I don't want the mic to hide it, so you can actually see me working with the Express Key. So I'm going to start a new I'm going to start a new project as I normally would. So this is, let's say, this is going to be my actual drawing surface, and I scale it up. And then I'm going to create a second one, imagining that this is my image reference. So this one I'm going to scale down. I'm going to scale this one down, and I'll move this one up here. Now, of course, if I'm working with the full real estate of the screen, I'd, have, I'd be able to zoom in much bigger, and I'd be working larger than this. And I'm going to start by just right-clicking the button and selecting my drawing tool. Okay, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna select. Maybe I want to make my brush a couple of notches bigger. And I'm just gonna draw a few laggy brush strokes because I'm recording. Remember, how does it feel? Well, when I studied fine arts and I first started drawing, um, I drew, I learned on a big canvas on a sketchbook, and I always bought the big sketchbooks. I wasn't the type of guy who got those little, you know, cute little Da Vinci things and did these little sketches. I like drawing with my arm, and I'd do life drawings of people sitting in cafes and stuff. I'd always draw with the side of my pencil and, you know, go across the thing like this. Now that's something you can get tilt sensitivity for with this. Let's see, I want to use tilt sensitivity. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not. I don't bother with this. But how does it feel? I just feel confident. I feel that hands-on connection. It's direct hand-to-eye coordination. Now, of course, I can draw perfectly well. I've been drawing for the last, you know, seven, eight years using primarily an Intuos, right? So I'm perfectly comfortable on the thing. But it doesn't quite compare to this. Just the same level of control that you get drawing directly on the screen. Now, painting. So I'm going to grab more of a painting brush, all right? Something if you watch, if, you, if you've seen any of my YouTube videos, I've got lots of those out there. This is one of my favorite favorite brushes. I'm going to grab something with a bit of color. Now, one of the first things I noticed as soon as I started to paint on this thing, like I've worked on the 22, but I did 
I did mostly, I know I did mostly painting work when I was working on the 22 as well. But one of the first things I noticed is I was looking for a nice image, one of my own paintings to stick on the as my desktop wallpaper. You know, you got a nice display, you want to show it off. So I grabbed, I was looking around and the first thing I noticed was, damn, most of my paintings needed a little bit of extra refinement. When you're this close and you're working this big, it allows you to see fine detail a lot more, allowing you to push detail and refinement in your painting that little bit further. Of course, you can always zoom in, but it's just something that jumped out in my face a lot quicker. All right. The other thing that I notice about this is because you can work so close and because you have such good control, edge control is a lot easier using a Cintiq. That's something I found quite significant, okay? Is edge control, getting nice hard edges, actually, oops, let me undo that. Getting nice hard edges versus softer edges is very easy to achieve on this thing. You have, and because of course, you know, if you're working with the Pro Pen, you have higher levels of sensitivity. But just making that transition from hard to soft edges is just a lot, a lot easier with this thing. I find I have a lot more control. I just seem to accomplish my task a lot easier working on this thing versus working on any tools. It is a significant difference. And I f another thing I found that was interesting is that I, I find I've loosened up a lot working on this thing. Because I have the hand-to-eye coordination, my hand moves faster. I'm more... I'm quicker, right? There's, there isn't that, you know, 0.5 second lag between brain and hand. It's just a direct connection. So I find it actually really makes a difference in terms of my, just how quickly, how quickly my hand moves. And it has loosened up my style a little bit, which I have no qualms about whatsoever. So let's do a little bit of blending here. Why don't I grab another color? I'll move my flow down to about 50%. Now, of course, I could use, I would normally use a keyboard shortcut for that, but in this particular case, I got it right up in your face. Okay, so if you want to do a little blending here. Oh, I'm going to get the right color here. Like that. Here, why don't we get a nice bright red. Oops, bright red, not dull red. And I'll get a blue. Like that. Let's do a little blend. It feels like I feels like I would feel if I was drawing with in, with this particular case pastels directly on a nice Arches paper or something like that. It's got a really really nice natural feel to it. Let's grab a little yellow. Go for a little orange. At no point in time while I'm drawing, even though I completely forgot about it, did I end up doing this. Because if I do this, I feel like I'm drawing off in an angle. Because I'm up close and personal, and plus I'm turning my head to talk to you, it just feels, I feel complete, I feel like I have a seat belt on me holding my back in place. So as far as ergonomics is concerned, very significant difference. Now of course if I wasn't recording, I'd be moving a lot faster with my hands. Look at that. It just works. What can I tell you? It's an absolutely lovely experience working on this thing. It's immediately responsive. It's incredibly intuitive. You get that perfect hand to white co coordination. You get that traditional feel back when you're working on, on a Cintiq. So 25 enthusiastic thumbs up. All right, we've had a chance to overview the entire product from the pen display itself to the uh, express remote to the ergo stand to an actual hands-on demonstration of working on it. It's my pleasure to give you my final verdict of the 27 QHD Cintiq. And I give it a very enthusiastic 9 on 10. Ooh, fanboy, why are you giving it a 9 and not a 10 if, if you're so seduced by this machine? Well, it's a statement. The 9 on 10 is actually a statement, and that statement is not against the manufacturers of the Wacom, because I think it's an absolutely beautiful piece of equipment. It is a statement against the marketing team, because there's, there's no doubt this thing's been tested to death by Adobe, by Corel, by Autodesk, you name it, okay? They've had lots of people testing this thing out, and I'm pretty sure somewhere down that line, somebody said, dude, that kickstand angle, the actual drawing angle of, of the tablet, is absolute garbage. You have to calculate that cost in because you, in my personal opinion, it's not worth buying this if you're not gonna get a stand with it. But of course, 
Save yourself the money, don't buy the touch, and invest that money towards the ergo stand instead because the touch functionality sucks ass. With that said, build quality, design, functionality, size, the express key remote, functionality, build quality, usability, the ergo stand, functionality and build quality and the overall quality of the responsiveness of this system this deserves a 10 on 10 and the only reason i'm giving it a 9 on 10 is because of that sly move from the marketing department but this is an absolutely gorgeous piece of equipment and if you want me to endorse <laughs> your purchase if you can afford it get one because one year from now you're going to forget about the expense and you're going to do nothing but benefit from this for the rest of your life because this, these things never die they last forever so I hope you enjoyed my review of the Cintiq 27 QHD. And remember, if you want to check out the alternative to the Ergo Stand, you can go and check out the Ergotron. I have the link in the description as well. And if you're interested in taking online courses yourself, an online mentorship at LucidPixel, you can check the link below. I have all the information there as well. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care.